Hey guys, we are in the geochemistry lecture series and this is lecture number 2. And the topic of discussion is the origin of elements and the book which I referred for the topic is the principles of geochemistry by Messon and more. Welcome to my channel success guru and myself Panchanadam and let's get into the heading. The origin of elements. The structure of the nuclei of the element as aggregate of proton and neutron has resulted in theory to explain their origin and the relative abundance by synthesis or built up starting with either or both of these basic building blocks. Several theories as to the mode of the formation of the chemical elements have been proposed. One which may be termed as the equally BM theory proposes that the relative abundance of the elements are a result of the frozen thermodynamic equilibrium equilibrium between the atomic nuclei at some higher temperature and density. The accept, this is acceptable up to the atomic number of 40, but for the elements of higher atomic number, this assumption leads to the impossibly low abundance. So it has been not accepted. On this account, theories has been proposed that consider the relative abundance of elements as the resultant from non-equilibrium process. On this basis, the lighter nuclei were built up by the thermonuclear process and the remaining nuclei by successive neutron capture with intervening beta disintegration. This theory predicts the general trend of the observed data, that is from the cosmic abundance, but it fails to explain some of the detailed features, that is particularly the bridge of gap caused by the non-existence of nuclei of atomic weight of 5 and 8. So it is apparent that no single process can satisfactorily account for the observed complexities. The advance in the nuclear physics allow Burbridge, Burbridge, Fowler and Hoyer in 1957 to propose that the general future of the abundance curve could be explained by the nuclear reaction that is taking place in the stars. In order to explain the measured distribution, they outline eight processes for the synthesis. In their model, elemental matter starts with hydrogen which form the primitive matter, primitive matter from which the stars were made and the individual steps in the synthesis are as follows. The first one is the hydrogen burning process that is the hydrogen burns to produce the helium. The hydrogen burns by successive proton capture to produce three helium and it has been explained in the left side table and this process takes place at the temperature of 10 power 7 degrees Celsius and the density of 100 grams per centimeter cube. In the older or the second generation stars that contains carbon-12, a catalyst cycle pro progressing through six steps allow the overall reaction from hydrogen to helium that takes place and it has been explained in the left side table. The second process is the helium burning or three body collision or simply triple alpha reaction that takes place uh, temperature in the order of 10 to 8 degrees Celsius and the density of 10 to 5 gram per centimeter cube. And this process provides a mechanism for the skipping of an unstable nuclei which mass of 5 and 8. The carbon 12 produced can add helium to produce oxygen 16. And at this point in the star evolution, hydrogen has been converted to helium and the helium into carbon and oxygen with an accumulation of some nitrogen. The further collapse of the star produce higher temperature and greater density and that allows the additional reaction that takes place as alpha process or carbon and hydrogen burning process that takes place in the stage of a stellar evolution say carbon 12 nuclear react to form species such as neon sodium magnesium together with the new supply of alpha particles and the protons in the sequence of oxygen Oxygen nuclei react to produce silica, phosphorus, sulfur, and probably chlorine and argon from secondary reaction involving the alpha particle proton and neutrons. As the star evolves further, silica burning or equilibrium, that is the E process, takes place because of the high temperature and the rate of nuclear reaction is increased, and the element with atomic number greater than SI28 comes into equilibrium with it. And this process is responsible for the nuclear synthesis of the most abundant nuclei with a mass number of 28 to 57 under FEP. With the production of Fe group of elements, the star will have a run out of the reaction that can supply it the energy. Since the Fe 56 is the top of the curve of binding energy per nucleon. And the next process is the slow neutron capture process that is the primitive mechanism for the synthesis of the element heavier than the ion. 
is by the capture of the neutron. The neutrons are apparently produced by the reaction of the particles of carbon, oxygen and neon. The slow neutron capture or the S process can produce elements up to the up to that includes bismuth, but many absorbed nuclei are bypassed. The process is called as S process because of the rate of neutron addition is very slow compared to the beta decay of lifetime of the nuclei produced. Any unstable nuclei produced generally decay before the next neutron interaction takes place. And this process produces the peak in the element abundance curve which there is a buildup of stable element with a low neutron capture cross sections. The sixth process that should be produced element heavier than the bismuth and to make neutron rich elements not made by the S process. A rapid neutron capture or the R process has been proposed. In this process neutrons are added to beta decay unstable nuclei before the decay can take place. And this allows the production of many nuclei which may thought subsequent decay about for the neutron rich isotope of some elements. The larger neutron flux for the R process appears to take place during the massive stellar explosion that is called as the supernova and this explosion provides the larger flux of neutron required and the mechanism for the dispersing the elements made by all of the process into the space so that they can be recycled. The next process is the relatively rare proton rich isotope of the heavy elements not produced by the neutron capture process or ex explained by a rapid proton capture or P process. Such a process may take place in the outer part of, outer part of the supernova explosions. And the last process which explains the process of formation of lithium, beryllium and boron which is not explained above in mechanism has been attributed to the X process. That is most likely to be the spallation process in which two nuclei collides to form a newer one that could be like carbon or oxygen. These processes are correlated with the absorbed features of the stellar evolution. All stars convert hydrogen into helium, but only the most massive star produces the element in the upper part of the red table, and certain heavy nucleates apart appear to form only under catastrophic conditions, such as development of supernovas. A supernova is essentially a stellar explosion the catastrophic disintegration of stars. The explosion produces luminosity of the order of 10 power 8 that of the sun and the luminosity falls off exponentially with the half life of 56 days. With this I am concluding this uh, lecture and if you want to see our other lectures you can check our playlist. You can connect with us by mail, Facebook and Instagram and these are the links. You can support us by like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.